Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing my updated 2024 United States House of Representative election map. I am actually working on an election night for this currently right now, so we will be getting an election night of sorts on this uh, fairly soon. Uh, however, right now, this is my very, very early take on the House of Representatives election. Spoiler alert, it's actually a very boring election as very few seats actually flip. As we saw in 2022, there were a whole bunch of seats that were supposed to flip and none of them flipped. Um, and then the ones that did either flipped by huge margins or, yeah, it didn't make any sense. Well, I mean, it, it did make sense, but you kind of didn't see it coming. Anyway, uh, we will get started in the first state, which is the state of Alaska. Alaska, nobody has declared their candidacy yet. It's currently Mary Peltola, who is the Democratic incumbent here. It's going to be hard for her to win re-election with Trump or DeSantis on the ballot. It's going to be, um, I would say this is like tilt to lean R if it weren't for the fact that they have ranked choice voting in the state of Alaska, which basically means you rank your candidates in order of preference, which basically ensures that the incumbent always wins. Literally always. There is no way Mary Peltola can possibly lose with a system like that in place. If Alaskans reject the, the um, rank choice voting in a future ballot measure, there is legitimately the shot that Mary Peltola does go down, I'm not ruling that out. I know people say, oh, look, she won by 9.9 .9 in a supposed red wave year. Well, number one, it wasn't a red wave year. And number two, she's against Sarah Palin. Enough said, okay, guys? Anyway, we're going to go on to Arizona. David Schweikert, I think, just barely has the edge. I think he'll win by a tilt margin of like 0.1%. He was supposed to do way better this year than that, and it was still a very disappointing showing on his part that he only got 0.9%. I'm not 0.9%. He won by 0.9%. Um, so th with that being said, I will say that this district is likely going to remain Republican, but very, very narrowly, just due to the incumbent factor um, and such. Eli Crane's probably going to win by likely again. I mean, I, Arizona's only shifting left. I don't see this district becoming safe. He was running against Tom O'Halloran before, which and Tom O'Halloran was an incumbent, which is why it was closer. But honestly, he about ran up Trump's margin, uh, no more, no less, really. So I don't really see him having much of an issue holding on. It's just not going to be a safe seat for him. Uh, but he's still going to hold on. Juan Cisco Maney, Click Political Report, has this district as a toss-up. Um, I would say this is a lean margin. I would give this district to Juan Cisco Maney by around a point. So that's about all I have to say about that. California. Kevin Kiley is going to be running for another term. Um... I don't really know if he would win this by a likely margin or a safe margin. I'm going to say likely. He overperformed Trump by quite a bit. However, this district was never very solid for Republicans to begin with. It just wasn't. So it was about standard that he won by 7.2. That's about what I thought he might get. I mean, I thought, you know, 7.2, decent margin overall. So he's probably going to still win that. Josh Harder... Uh, he's kind of an overperformer. He underperformed in 2022 because red or leaning national environment, even though it wasn't a red wave. Um, he's going to win by safe this time. There is no, I see no reason at all why uh, this district would not be safe. With 9.6%, that's barely under safe, so I don't really see that being any different. John Duarte, I'm sorry, man, you're going down. Uh, you just can't win unless you end up being the new David Valadeo. There are a number of Republicans in California that outperform the ticket. There's Michelle Steele, David Valadeo, there's Young Kim, there's Mike Garcia, most infamously. Um, and John Duarte could absolutely become one of those. 
but I don't see any evidence for that as of yet. I feel like he won more on a fluke than he actually won by legitimately. Uh, there are two people who have declared for this district. There's Phil Arbalo, who I think ran, and he ran for political office. He, I think he may have ran for uh, this district in 2022, actually, and he was a runner-up in the primary, so... Uh, Arbalo is already declared, and then Adam Gray has actually filed paperwork to run for election to this seat, um, so there is that. I think Duarte would lose to Gray in a rematch, seeing as how close it was before, um, and yeah. Jim Costa, I don't know why this seat was competitive to begin with, this is a Biden plus 20.3 in a, in a presidential year with Biden on the ballot, with Harris, you know, from being from California, all that stuff, uh, this district should not be any issue for him whatsoever. David Valadeo, I know, guys, David Valadeo, electoral juggernaut, he's winning re-election by like a point. Uh, he did outperform significantly this year. Nobody thought he was going to win by three. Then you consider the fact he ran against a guy who wouldn't even debate him, and then it all makes sense. Now, that being said, he is running against that guy, same guy again. That same guy has actually filed paperwork. That's Rudy Salas who has filed paperwork to run for this seat again. And um, because of that, it's going to easily be a win. If Rudy Salas manages to actually debate Del Valadeo, things could get interesting. But as of right now, Salas is a bad candidate to run. And there is simply no reason to believe this seat is going to flip. If he can win in 2022, he can win 2024. Julia Brandley's seat, that should be no issue for her. I don't know why that was nine points. Mike Garcia is not winning by likely again. He's just not. It's not going to happen in a um, presidential election year. But he is going to win by a lean margin because he's basically proven that he is a juggernaut, especially if he runs against Christy Smith again. If Christy Smith runs against him, she's going to get obliterated. I'm sorry to the Christy Smith fans who heard that. Ken Calvert, he's a very lazy campaigner. If you watch Real American Politics, this guy is constantly making fun of Ken Calvert being a lazy campaigner. Which, I mean, sure, whatever, he is, but he's still going to win. It's just going to be Lean R. Michelle Steele, going to be Lean R also. She ran against a weak opponent before. She's probably going to win by like two points. Um, against Kim Bernice uh, Nugent. I'm not sure how you say her last name. She's the only declared candidate for the seat. Jay Chen could also run again. Uh, according to Wikipedia, he's a potential candidate. He could run again in this Biden Plus 6 seat, but I don't see him doing so. And even if he did, he would get obliterated again because he's an awful, awful candidate. Katie Porter. Now, this district, I think, could flip. I'm going to put it as tilt D right now because we have a former representative running for it. That would be Harley Ruda. Um, but Katie Porter's 2022 opponent, which, if I remember correctly, that's Scott Bow. Uh, Scott Bow is running for the seat. And there is a history of ch uh, challengers from previous election cycles coming back and always managing to... Uh, win somehow like once the incumbent retires like they're it's like then they can win uh, because they're not running against the incumbent anymore so I think he could have a legitimate shot the only problem is this district has historically voted uh, blue even though it's been closer down ballot I'm not sure if there is really any sense in saying that this is a flip just yet we are going to have to wait and see about that Mike Levin his district should be likely. He won by likely before. Why won't he win by likely again? Colorado. Lauren Boebert's district. Adam Frisch just announced uh, today. Uh, that would be the 14th I'm recording this video on. I'm releasing it on the 15th. But on the 14th, Adam Frisch actually announced that he was going to be running for this seat again. And I see him losing by a little bit more this time. Probably by like two points. The main reason why this district was so close in 2022 was, in fact, because of Joe O'Dea wang down the ticket. He didn't get the MAGA turnout, all that stuff. 
Lauren Boebert is also pretty polarizing, and that was part of the reason why. But in general, there just wasn't the Trump base there. And so I think you're going to see her win by a little bit more uh, next year because of that. Yudaira Caraveo, um, she won due to there being like a libertarian on the ticket. But Colorado is shifting left, so I'm going to have to give that to her still. I, I'm sorry, guys. I can't see that flipping. Connecticut, uh, Johanna Hayes, uh, probably going to win that. I don't see why not. Florida, there are like only three competitive districts left in Florida. Can you believe it? It's really crazy. Uh, Darren Soto's seat. I could, if honestly, if DeSantis is on the ballot, this could be a pretty competitive race. I mean, he underperformed by 10 this year, and considering the fact Florida's only getting redder, we could see this seat drop down to lean. I'm going to do that. I'm a I will actually do that. Anna Paulina Luna, she's probably going to win by a little bit more, but she's not going to be safe as of yet just because she's more polarizing. Also, she had that kind of George Santos-esque scandal. Uh, so there is that. Jared Moskowitz, his seat probably remains lean. I mean, it really depends on if Trump or DeSantis is on the ballot. Because a lot of these districts will shift back towards the left uh, because Trump would be on the ballot. But if DeSantis is on the ballot, they would shift to the right. So Jared Moskowitz's seat and Darren Soto's seat could both be likely or safe even, depending on who is on the ballot. But I'm going to leave them as lean for right now because Florida's rightward shift and such. Illinois. Sean Caston, this guy won pretty easily before. He's going to win pretty easily again. Lauren Underwood, same deal. Eric Sorensen, this is the only competitive seat left in Illinois. After the horrible gerrymandering that was this map, uh, Democrats really gained the upper hand. Eric Sorensen is a pretty weak candidate. From what I've heard, this guy basically ran on being gay he was like, I'm gay, vote for me, vote for the gay boy. But, yeah, he is not a strong candidate because of that. However, we don't really know who his challenger is going to be yet, so it's really going to be hard to see him losing as of right now, especially in a 7.4 Biden seat. So I'm going to keep this as lean, but we are going to say he wins by less this time. Um just because he wouldn't be running against a weak Republican. As I also heard, the Esther Joy King was a pretty weak Republican. So I don't think that will continue to happen. Frank Mervan's seat, probably likely. I thought it was going to be like a point, and then it ended up being five points. But um, yeah, it's... It's going to be hard to flip that seat. Jennifer Ruth Green's preparing for a rematch from what I have seen on her website. She's said that she's hinted at it. So, um, But yeah, I don't see that seat flipping. Maybe if she ran a better campaign this time, she could get it to lean, but I don't see it right now. Iowa, okay. I was still trending to the right. We are going to give Ashley Henson's seat actually... We are going to give that seat... Eh. You know what? We will keep it as likely. I've been giving this safer a little bit, but I've, I'm have i going to change it back to likely. Zach Nunn, he's going to win by lean now that there's not an incumbent running in that seat. Marionette Miller-Meek's going to win by likely. I was pretty good at predicting these Iowa seats for what it's worth. I just didn't predict that... Um, that the third district was going to be uh, tilt. So, Kansas, Cherise Davids district, no longer competitive. Just not competitive at all. Okay? We're done saying Cherise Davids district is competitive. It's not competitive, guys. Okay? Kansas is shifting to the left. David is, Davids is popular. It's not competitive anymore. That's one competitive seat we can guarantee is not is just not going anywhere. Jared Golden. Oh man. 
If they ran, like, Liz Caruso against him, maybe they would have a shot at picking this off. Maybe he'll run for Senate against Angus King or something. I don't know. That would be a dumb move by him, but I'm just saying that's possible. As of right now, this is likely. He's a very popular incumbent in his district. There's nothing that can knock this guy off. He wins by six when Trump carries the district by six. So, I mean, it, he literally is the mirror image of um, of how well Trump or DeSantis or whoever does in the state. He always wins by likely, apart from, of course, uh, 20, uh, 2018. Maryland, David Trone was supposed to actually come close to losing, and he didn't lose. So we're going to keep that district as likely. There is just... No way, guys. I'm sorry. 2022 was the year to do it, and if you couldn't do it in 2022, then I doubt you could. Th then I doubt you could in 2024. Um, okay, we're gonna look at Michigan next. Michigan. Alyssa Slot can very well may run for the Senate. I'm gonna keep this district as lean. I'm gonna say she wins by two points as of right now. Alyssa Slot can very well could. Uh, go down if Trump is on the ballot and somehow manages to sweep Michigan again. But I really doubt he's going to do that. There, I just don't see it. I'm sorry, guys. I don't see Trump sweeping Michigan anytime soon. But it is going to be closer. Michigan is going to be closer in 2024 than it is than it was in 2022. Because in 2022, the top of the ticket was D plus 10. Okay, guys? D plus 10. In 20... In 2024, it's going to be D plus 6 at the very, at the most, okay? It's, at the very most, it's going to be D plus 6. That's if DeSantis is on the ballot. If Trump is on the ballot, it's going to be like D plus 4, okay? So, um, it's going to sweet, uh, make this district shift to the left, I mean to the right. This district is also going to shift to the to the right. That's John James's seat. And Dan Kildee, don't give me that this district is actually going to be safe. It's not. It's going to be uh, likely in uh, in uh, 2024. Minnesota. Angie Craig always does worse in presidential years. She just does. Let's face it, guys. She underperformed vastly back in 2020. Um, although it was kind of because of that legalized marijuana now party candidate. So, um, Ryan Zink's district is going to remain lean. I know that's a shocker. He could actually lose if they put up a good candidate to him. He's that bad. He is a terrible guy. I mean, this guy, he has no shame. He's like, I'm going to commit a whole bunch of scandals, and then I'm going to run for house. No shame whatsoever in this guy. But, of course, all they can do is talk about George Santos, can't they? Anyway, um, Nebraska, Don Bacon, his district shifting to the left, but we still got to give it to him in the end because... This guy does always manage to win somehow or another. His district will flip eventually, but 2024 is not going to be the year for him to do it. Um, especially considering he under he outperformed in 2020 um, by quite a bit, actually by close to double digits, if not double digits. Nevada. If DeSantis is on the ballot, all these seats are going to be close or flips. Right now, I'm going to put Susie Lee's district as tilt, Stephen Horsford's district as lean, and uh, Dina Titus's district as lean as well. But all these districts have the potential to flip if DeSantis is on the ballot. The third one, probably the most likely to flip. New Hampshire, Chris Pappas' seat is going to be, well, actually it's going to be lean. If DeSantis is on the ballot, New Hampshire is going to do its anti-incumbent thing and swing to the right. Um, so there is going to be that. Although, yes, I do know in 2022, Maggie Hassan won by nine points. I get it, but still, it's 
on the presidential level, anti-incumbent. Tom Keene, he's probably going to win a re-election. I mean, narrowly, he'll probably win by like a point, but it's going to be a win. New Mexico. There is one person running for Gabriel Vasquez's seat, and that is former Representative Yvette Harrell. She has filed paperwork to run for this seat, and I could see her winning if DeSantis is on the ballot. So I'm going to put this district as tilt R for right now. If DeSantis is on the ballot, New Mexico is going to be closer down ballot. It will be, okay? I mean, he is going to have appeal with the um, with the people in New Mexico. So, New York. George Santos. His district easily flips. Easily. And I mean easily, guys. This is going to be nearly double digits, if not double digits. Um, Anthony Despacito's district. I'm sorry, Anthony, but I just don't see you pulling it off, man. Same with Michael Lawler. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, Pat Ryan probably wins by like two, three points around there. Uh, Mark Molinaro probably, I would say probably holds on very narrowly. I could see him winning. I mean, fine plus 4.6, that's not a terribly Democratic seat. That's like a swing district. And Mark Molinaro is, from what I can tell, a pretty... Um, solid candidate, so I don't see any reason why that seat wouldn't um, remain in Republican hands. Joseph Morrell's district, I mean, that district is safe. There's no reason why that district should be close. The Lee Zeldin effect is gone, guys. Let's not forget, Lee Zeldin is gone. Unless he runs for Senate against uh, Kristen Gillibrand, but I doubt that. And uh, Brandon Williams' district... Gosh darn it, this is going to be close, but I'm sorry, Brandon. Lee Zeldin helped you. This time you're not going to be so lucky. North Carolina. We're going to get a new map for North Carolina soon. Uh, we don't know what that map is going to look like, though, so I'm just going to... You know what? It's only fair to say most of these districts will probably be left as toss-ups. I'm going to say Don Davis has the advantage with the map we have now. Kathy Manning has probably is probably going to win by double digits. Chuck Edwards should not have won by 9.3. He shouldn't have. That should have been a um, that should have been a double digit win. So it's not going to be that way again. Wiley Nickel, Bo Hines is running against him uh, to unseat him in a rematch. I think that with uh, Trump on the ballot we could see more turnout and actually be able to flip this seat um ah what the heck that district's a toss up I think it could lean D but I'm going to put it as tilt R for the heck of it because I think uh, Bo Hines might actually have a chance Greg Landsman's district. This district, again, kind of a toss-up by all means, considering the fact that we don't know what the new Ohio map is going to look like. Um, but Ohio does have a pretty Republican legislature, and I think they're going to do something to, to get Greg Landsman to lose. Gosh darn it, though, this is going to be close. We're going to put it as Tiltar right now, just because you know that Ohio's legislature will do everything to make sure he loses. Um, Marcy Captur, her district is probably lean. She has just a way of connecting with constituents, from what I've heard, that really makes her um, a strong incumbent for whatever reason. Amelia Sykes District, again, that's probably going to be gerrymandered into oblivion. So, you, Democrats, you still get three districts in Ohio. And it's going to be two once Marcy Capter finally retires. Oregon. Uh, Laura Chavez-Dreamer, I'm sorry, man. I mean, woman. 
you're gonna probably lose. Val Hoyle's district, probably likely by like five points. Andrea Salinas' district is probably going to be... You know what? Here's an interesting story about Andrea Salinas' district. She released a ad uh, during her campaign against Mike Erickson that uh, he claimed actually defamed him for something... I think it was something about drug possession. Here, let's look it up. If Mike Erickson runs for a rematch and uses that to his advantage... Over, yeah, Erickson has filed a defamation against Andrea Salinas over a use of a political ad talking about his arrest in 2016. On Thursday, December 1, the judge overseeing the case allowed the case to continue. This is significant because this case cites Oregon revised statute uh, so-and-so, which could overturn the election results. Erickson's attorney has stated that Erickson isn't currently seeking to bar Andrea Salinas from her elected office at this time. So, she actually could lose. But right now, I'm going to keep it as lean. These are some pretty competitive districts we got here in Oregon. I will say that. Um, okay. Pennsylvania. First of all, Chris Deluzio is not winning by a likely margin again. I'm sorry, he's not. If he does, then we'll know he's an electoral juggernaut, but for right now, we can't assume that, guys. Um, Brian Fitzpatrick, probably going to win by safe at the end of the day. Pennsylvania is going to be way closer down ballot than it was in 2022. These districts will still be shifting to the right. Susan Wilde and Matt Cartwright probably both hold on by tilt margins. Scott Perry probably wins by a likely margin of around nearly 10 points. Or you know what, actually... We're going to put that district as safe. No, we're going to keep it as likely. Never mind. Rhode Island. The only reason this district was even close was because of you-know-who, Alan Fung. If Alan Fung runs again, we might have a race. But other than that, I'm sorry, guys. Seth Magaziner's the favorite. Texas. Monica De La Cruz's district is safe at this point. No questions asked. Uh, Vicente Gonzalez, uh, he, his district is swinging right, too. And Henry Cuellar's district, don't be so sure. Don't be so sure, guys. Especially if DeSantis is on the ballot. We could see this district come close, but I'm going to put it as likely for right now. Republicans are one seat away from that majority. Um, okay, sorry, I blanked out there. Jennifer Kiggins, she probably wins. This is a competitive district. It doesn't matter that it voted for Biden by 1.9%. Um, it's going to be cl it's going to be still a swing district this time, and Kiggins is the incumbent, so I don't see why uh, she would really lose. Abigail Spanberger probably going to win by a lean margin. And Jennifer Wexton probably going to win by a likely margin again just because Hung Cow will be running for that seat again. Um, and he's a phenomenal candidate. So, Washington. Marie Glusenkamp Perez is going down, baby. I'm sorry, political chatter. She is. I'm... Um, I, I, people are saying she's the Mary Peltola of Alaska. She's the Mary Peltola of Alaska. And it's like, where do you have evidence for that? Give me evidence, baby. Like, okay, she may have won in a district that was like, that was like solid R in 2020 when Harar Butler was on the, was on the ticket. But I mean, I'm sorry. That's the only evidence you got. You can't say that she's some electoral juggernaut. She went on a fluke, okay? But let's just face it. Joe Kent, he had attack ads against him. There was a lot of stuff going on in that primary that really prevented him from being able to reach his full potential during the general. Also, the Washington Senate race was not as close as it was supposed to be. And so, Perez narrowly won. 
Kim Schreier, likewise, she is not going to win by likely again. It's not going to happen, guys. So that gives Republicans 219. Wisconsin. Brian Steele's district. This district was only, well, actually, Brian Steele could run for Senate, but I'm going to put this district as safe. He's probably going to end up winning that district by a lot. Derek Van Orden. He's probably going to win this district by likely at the end of the day. It was supposed to be likely in 2022, but we all know what happened at the top of the ticket in Wisconsin. So, uh, yeah. Oh, we forgot Georgia. Georgia Sanford Bishop's district is going to remain likely by just a little bit. Okay, it's not going to be likely by a huge amount. It's just going to barely be likely. And that is my United States House of Representatives prediction. Whoa, this was a long video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye.